And now it's time for development debates. We dig deeper into some of the questions shaping the future and present of China. Today, we'll see experts debate inheritance of wealth in China. According to Reuters' report, family businesses have been taking a dominant role in China. There are more than 10 million privately owned companies in China. Nearly 40% of the companies that go public on China's stock market are privately owned companies. And among all these companies, more than 80% of them are family businesses. As Reuters reported, with such a huge quantity of family businesses, the issue of hiring successors is drawing public attention. According to data from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, China's first generation of entrepreneurs is coming to a retirement age. In the next three to eight years, over three million private firms will have to deal with succession issues. Medea Electric is one of the biggest Chinese electronics suppliers. The founder, He Xiangjiang, retired from the position as the chairman of the Medea Group in 2012. Instead of hiring his son, he gave a raise to Fang Hongbo. This is the first case of someone from outside the family to run a company with assets of over $10 billion in China. The practice of hiring within the company and outside the family is our topic of debate. Zheng Shui Liang is the president of Yangtze Delta Institute of Tsinghua University. He supports hiring outside the family. He diagnoses the successors of Chinese family companies with bankrupt genes. In traditional Chinese ideology, family is usually the most valued tenant. Sung thinks most Chinese entrepreneurs do not have a strong sense of social responsibility. He doesn't think these companies make serious efforts to contribute to the greater society. Most entrepreneurial families are reluctant to hire outsiders for fear of property losses, even if the outsiders can provide larger contribution. Zung points out that the many family successors usually copy their family's values and companies' operating ideas. As generations of successors are all doing the same thing, the family firms will predictably fall into bankruptcy within three generations. However, Larry H.P. Long, the famous Chinese economist, holds a different point of view. Long insists that children will be better successors than professional managers. Long takes the Toyota family as an example of a successful family firm. Toyota was established in 1937 by Kichiro Toyota as a spin-off from his father's weaving company. In 2005, Kichiro's daughter, as a second-generation successor, hired someone outside the family to operate the company. In 2007, Toyota's profits broke company records and took up the largest market share in the world. But later in 2009, quality problems became an issue in Toyota's vehicle products. Based on this, Long thinks that many professional managers, as employees, prefer to pursue immediate profits and growth without considering the long-term development of the company. The quality of the product and reputation of the company are usually sacrificial lambs in their short-term pursuits. Long thinks that a family member, especially the children of entrepreneurs, would be more trustworthy in operating a family firm with a long history. Additionally, Long mentions that those professional managers are easily motivated by higher salaries, unlike family members who want to protect a legacy. He thinks this makes outsiders less trustworthy than family successors. Succession problems are not unique to China. However, there are obvious risks involved in limiting influential companies to the fate of the genetic lottery. The country is currently run by princelings and connections, so training new talents is uncommon for family firms. Hiring a major domo comes at risk, but bottlenecking talent couldn't stunt the entire economy. A lack of new talent may lead to the demise of many businesses. But as Matt Damon and Vickers taught us, you shouldn't underestimate social distinctions made from the inheritance of wealth. Vickers wrote about settlers in New England that use a patriarchal society to control the demand for labor by making their sons work. Eventually, their offspring made up a labor force sufficient enough for the Industrial Revolution. There is already a massive labor demand in China, so major domos are only natural.